Berserk episode 10. Um, first off, it's basically three sections to this episode. Um, death versus the creature in the valley. Um, guts versus the three angel. And then the ending, which is the sacrificial part. First off, death versus the, the creature. The eyes that we've been seeing for the past, I think, three or four episodes. Basically... We go into a flashback with him. Um, there's no name for him. And in his flashback, he states that how no one knew him, no one needed him, and basically he had no purpose. And how the people up above, the humans, shunned him, throw rocks at him, and how he would uh, hide down in the pit in the daytime and come out and scavenge for food at nighttime. Basically, the pit... Of the dead bodies was his home. And one day. Dead bodies just start. Dropping down on him. And basically that's how he died. And before he lost consciousness. uh, The five angels came. And apparently. At that time he had hate. And. All of that had built up. And apparently he agreed to. Whatever it was for. Basically he had a wish. Yeah, the world's wish. Apparently, what he wants, what he wants to happen, is is kind of difficult to explain. But basically, what he experienced led to him and his anguish towards the humans, and basically to all all that hate that built up, it just released on. The, well, I should say through what he is now, and we go into uh, that's death. Didn't kill him, but death basically sliced him up. He didn't... It wasn't really a fight. Because he... Death had... Uh, how can I say? Underestimated him a little. Because he didn't expect the, the little creature guy to have all that power. Now, he doesn't have a name. But basically... He was just a, a parasite. Just feeding on the evil. Feeding on the dead bodies. Just scavenging down in the pits. And uh, he had an idol. Apparently, he was a shape of the, the idol as well. Like the thing that uh, Griffiths wear on his neck, or most, all of the bad guys wore on their neck. Basically, he had one of those that he placed on a a kind of scarecrow-like priest that he made out of priest skin, skull. It's disgusting. But his uh, his backstory was absolutely sad. How no one cared about him and everyone just shunned him whenever he came out. It was basically sad. So, um. He explained all of this to Luca, by the way. He basically stated that uh, before he died, he just wanted to talk to someone. So, we go into Guts now. Guts versus the three angels. Now, Guts takes on these three guys, and he take and he took, like, two massive hits. I don't even know how he stood after that. Um, I basically understood where he came from, whereas he had to take hits in order to give hits. Whereas he sliced uh, the big guy... He had to take the, the crow looking guy. He had to take the the weapon head on in order to even get a good hit on these guys. And uh, of course, we got the jokes with uh, Puck, <coughs> Puck and Ishii in this episode. In this episode, saying that uh, how they were amazed that guts were fighting on equal ground. So it's kind of evenly matched. So you can understand the struggle between just being evenly matched. And um, and Puck was like, <laughs> if you um just train under me. You'll become. You'll eventually become as strong as strong as him. <laughs> so guts eventually wins, and guts just slices everything up. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I like um, Berserk. I'm gonna get into one of the main reasons soon as well. So after he defeats those three guys, we go into um, the sacrificial. But before the sacrificial, we had a little um, scene with um, Serpico and Lady Fernies. Where she says that every time she encounters the Black Swordsman, her world just shatters. And and I was thinking to myself, are she, is she even believing any of this that she's seeing? Or at the end of the day, will she just cast all of this out as just hallucinations? So, yeah. So we go into the sacrificial. Um, <laughs> so Ishii tries to help Guts by um, hopping on uh, Mazga's head. And at the end of it, Mazgas just takes off Ishii and just tosses him like a toy. 
he didn't even acknowledge that he was there. <laughs> I thought that was extremely funny too. Um, so we go into the sacrificial part. Now, before we go into the sacrificial part, basically, the creatures from the basement, they eventually got to the to the ground level where they started attacking the um, the refugees. They started attacking the refugees and forming the symbol, the symbol, the brand that's on Guts Night. They basically start forming that pattern. And gut, and Death states that um, for certainty, for certain, that at the end of this, um, some something of, of a shadow will be born. I can't wait till the next episode to see what that is. Um, I haven't read the manga, so I'm definitely going into all of this new. But um, after Death states that, we go into Mazgas, uh he sees the 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 red goo just engulfing the refugees, just destroying them, and he basically breathes fires on them, and it destroys some of them. So that gets um, some of the the refugees hope up a little, because Musgus is going on a speech about how he's how his new form is the power of God, and basically just trying to win over the refugees even more. And he's basically stating that. Casca is the cause of all of this. So we have to burn her at the stakes. So they rise the stakes, they rise the stake in order to um to burn her. And that's basically where the episode ends and Gus is heading towards Casca, but he's kind of in a debacle. Will he go after the four angels or save Casca? He's kind of in a debacle right there. Also, um that that ends the episode. I'm just gonna talk about um some of the things that I found important in this chapter right now. Uh, the, the scavenger creature guy that was in the, in the Valley of the Death, uh, he basically had one of the brands on the back of his throat. And it, they basically went into more of an explanation of what the brands mean, that they eventually have something that they want to bring into this world. Now, if you guys don't remember, in the first in the first season of Berserk, these guys, Guts, Casca, and the whole band of the Hawk were giving up everything in order for Griffiths to achieve his goal. Now, um, only Griffiths knows his goal, but we did get a glimpse of it where he wanted his own kingdom, and he would have done whatever it takes to get there. So it basically goes into... It basically goes into the description of the brand, whereas they have someone important to bring into this world. And death. Apparently, Luca calls death death, and he acknowledged it. So, assuming that, 100% assumption that that is death. And she, he basically told her that, uh, this, is no, this is no concern to you because um, you're immortal. Now, apparently, other powers are at work for the greater good here versus the evil. Um, also, you can't blame the refugees and the people for believing and going with Father Musga's plan in any sort of way. Even if it's evil, like these people are frail and they just want something to believe in. And they're just misusing the power, the power of God. They're just misusing the name as well. Um, basically... The, the red goo was a manifestation of all the hate and all of the anger, the death, all of the agony, everything that took place in that tower. That's basically what the red goo is, a representation of that. And, and Mazgaz is kind of a two-sided guy. On one side, he's with God, and on the other side, he's doing things that go against the word of God. Um, so you can't blame. I don't. I don't even know how to put it. It's kind of weird. Like like he's stuck in a in a like you're stuck in a hard place. Um, he basically understands what's going on and he's misusing it. Basically, he's misusing the people. He's misusing his powers. He's misusing everything. But on the other hand, he's partially right. It is because of Casca that those demons are there, because of the brand. On one hand, he's right, and on the, on the other hand, he's misusing every single thing for whatever goal that he has. But 
Either way, those are my thoughts on this chapter. I mean, this episode. Sorry. <laughs> um, I hope you guys like. And if you guys like, definitely subscribe. Check out my other videos. Um, what else? Let me hope I didn't forget anything. Also, uh, next episode looks like it's going to be real good. Um, it looks like Moscow's transformed in some way. And I don't know. Um, before I go, one more thing. Uh, the little egg guy was right. The world is full of despair, especially the berserk world. It is full of despair. Like People die for nothing sometimes. And you can't blame the people if they rise up and have this type of thought and action. You can't blame them. Like, he got shunned for no reason. <sighs> but other than that, guys, let me know you guys' thoughts in the comment section.